Well, the rain hit the valley for a little bit of time uh, earlier this week. Uh, we all know how important the rain is, especially for those of us living in the desert. But don't let all that rainwater go to waste. Dave, the garden guy, is joining us live from Glendale this morning with how they're harvesting rain from the recent storms to help the plants here in our desert. Hi, Dave. Hello, Olivia. Hey, listen, take a look. There's somebody posing over here for us. She wants to be on, uh, or he wants to be on air. There's our lovely peacocks. They've got them out here at the Glendale Public Library. But one thing they do out here is they rain harvest, and they rain harvest pa passively. In fact, a lot of this rain that comes off the top of this library flows down through a system. And if you just follow me a little bit, right past the peacock, and you see where it kind of flows on down, flows past all the plants down here. And that is a way to actually well water out here in the desert southwest and what we call passive watering. And there's a lot of ways to actually capture that water, but rainwater is one of the most important ways and easiest ways and really most beneficial way to water out here, especially a lot of our indigenous type plant material. I'm with Joanne, of course, and Joanne is our water specialist out here. She also wants to talk a little bit about some other ways to actually harvest water out here, right? Absolutely. I love talking about rainwater because it's free, it's fresh, and it's filling. And so we encourage people, if you have mounds in your landscape, turn those mounds upside down because all that rainwater runs off and you want to actually create berms and basins to actually harvest and capture that rainwater. Similar to what we've got right over your shoulder here. In fact, all those basins are right there in the desert. And this is very important, folks. When you're landscaping, or even if you've already got the landscaping in, creating these holes or creating these little areas where the water will collect goes a long ways to watering deeply and infrequently, and I talk about it all the time. It's very important to think along those lines. You've also got some other systems here that we want to take a look at. It. Tell us a little bit about your rain barrel system. Yeah, this is a super simple system to create. This is just a 55 uh, barrel drum, and this is super cheap, super inexpensive. My husband was able to install a hose bib, and we're actually able to water our plants with this free rainwater. And there's a hose bib right down there. You can get that off of some of your local hardware stores here in town. Order online. Very easily done. I want to show the screening system you made with this with just a little uh, well, what we call plant pallet type situation. We get these at the nurseries a lot of time and you put the screen right in the middle of that. That way you turn it upside down and you get all the debris out of the system itself. The other thing you do with this is you put a little BTI in there, don't you? Right, so you know you don't want to have mosquitoes and so that's why you want to either create some sort of a netting or you can also put these little dunks in and just make sure that you don't have mosquito problems. And this is called BTI, folks. Bacillus thuringiensis isronisis. Say that three times. Real easy <laughs> to use. It only affects mosquitoes themselves. No other type of wildlife or for that matter, even your dogs and cats. The other thing I want to show off, and Arnold, go right over there. You can see this large rain harvesting barrel, and these are becoming more and more popular. I've got one up at my ranch, it's about 3,000 gallons. It suffice to say, we water all the livestock garden areas up there in, well, during the whole summer with the water we've harvested off these last rains that we've had just now. So this is a great little system. What did this system actually cost you? Oh gosh, you know, I would say less than $20. And you were telling me earlier, you guys are able to water pretty much since you're... Uh... We do, we have actually five of these barrels. And so this is kind of a cool fact. If you have a 1,000 square foot roof, and we have a one inch rain event, you can harvest 600 gallons of water. There you go, folks, real easy to do. And April, I don't know when the next rain is, but if you haven't already done it, and I know you do it, start harvesting that water around your home <laughs> because it goes a long ways. That's right. Towards not only making your plants a lot healthier, but you're gonna save a lot of money, girl. Yeah. Doing good, Scotty, and take a look. This is what we call real zero scape type gardening. These are all indigenous type plant material. And along with that, some of this plant material is actually edible. In fact, we got some mesquite trees up here. They've got edible pods on them. Wolfberry right below it. Here's an interesting one. All this stuff does very well with very little water to no water. This is called Mormon tea. You find this out in the desert, in the desert southwest. And yet, you can make tea out of it. And of course, they've got some other ones out here. There are different types of aloes, jojobas out here, lots of different types of cactus. And of course, we're with Victoria, and Victoria, you're their water conservation specialist out here. Yes. You want to talk to us a little bit about, well, the actual attributes of saving the water, saving the plants, and how to make sure these plants survive during our hot summer weather, right? Yes, yeah, so Xeriscape is just working with our regional climate, but even the Arizona plants are not all of them are actually meant to be out in the sun, full right. sun all the time. So sometimes we have to do a few things just to make them thrive in the summer. And one thing I want to point out, you'll see a lot of shading here. A yes. lot of these plants companion plant with each other. Yes. So you'll see plants 
that are underneath the mm -hmm. canopies of the trees themselves. So this is a very important lesson here, folks. A lot of these plants can't survive just being put right in the middle of the sun, can they? No, your aloe, some of your agaves, and even your hedgehog cactus and pincushion, they are ones that need a little shade cloth. Let's show this shade cloth. Now, this is shade cloth that you actually utilize or over a lot of the cactus yes. out here. And what percentage is this? So you don't want more than 50, because otherwise it shades it too much and you'll get some damage. So what that means is, if you look at it, about 50% of the sun is actually blocked. You can get this on the internet. Yes. Co cover some of the plant material. She's got some cactus over here mm -hmm. covered, what are called golden barrels. Yes. Some other things, we got one minute left. Just show us off. Yeah, what so make about. sure you check your timer. It is time to adjust your plants watering to May and June, which is the highest amount of water they'll need. And there's uh, excellent guides. Your desert adapted plants and trees and shrubs really only need water about every 14 or so days. And where days. would they get this guy? So you can uh, download it, go to Glendale Water Conservation, um, and you can get download this PDF for free. And last but not least, lots of mulch. Mulch! You want to put lots yes. of this up to four inches. Don't put it right against the base of your trees and plants. Make sure it's out around that drip line. Make sure you're watering deeply and infrequently. If you don't already have, get yourself Boiler. a little probe like this. Yes. This is the ideal situation for making sure you're getting that water and it's penetrating at least three foot around the trees. I say it all the time, Scott. If you're watering, watering properly will get you through about 90% of the problems we have out here in the hot climate we've got on a daily basis coming up here very soon. Scotty, I don't know if you're treating your plants like they are out here, but I guarantee you if you need some examples, come on out and take a look. They've got some great examples on desert landscaping or what they call xeriscaping.